Hello everyone, welcome to Foreign Farming in the Philippines. Well, I guess this is going to be quite the process. I've uh, started testing the automatic turners and I can only get one of them to work. Uh, I've, tested, I've tested them all. Uh, I finally figured out how to isolate the, the turn button. This blue, when the blue icon comes on, that activates the automatic turner. You can see this one if you pay attention there, that's turning. That's how it turns the eggs. These uh, tubes simply rotate. But as you can also see, they're not turning on this one. I'll activate it again just so you can see. So they're turning there. And they're not turning here. And I've even worked them in different combinations. This the lower one here is actually the primary. The power is coming through it and going to this one. I've tried using this one, the one that is working as the primary. It doesn't make any difference. So I'm gonna take I'm going to take this one apart. It's the first one that's not working. And I'm going to see if it's... Uh, I'm going to take this mechanism apart here and see if the, the motor's just uh, frozen or, or what. If I can't get this motor to work, then I'm going to go down and get some of the spare parts that Bill sent me to make another incubator with and uh, see if I can make one of those work. Oh, All right, you're so on. We came down and fished three of these out. I can tell I'm going to have to change the brackets around. Um, remove this little... One of this one is gone. You have to lock it there. But hopefully I can get the housing... Hopefully these motors themselves are just pretty universal. And one will work on the next. I hope so. If not, then I'm going to have a, a single tray incubator for a while. All right, well, I've disassembled this uh, mechanism here. I uh, took the little cap out. This little cap here it holds uh, the roller in place. Uh, I spun this, I put a pair of pliers on it and spun this motor by hand. It does turn. You can see that there. Sorry about my shaky hands. But this motor does work. So, uh, I'm going to disassemble the front part of this and see if it's got strip gears or just what the problem is, why it's not working. Alright, well this is what this looks like inside. And it's fairly simple. Just one gear turns the next. And every other... Every other gear has a key in it uh, and on the other side the one one drives the other one next to it this little key right here fits into these tubes every other every other gear has one so when you turn one it turns the rest and they're not they're not really what you would call smooth. Yeah, I don't know, they're, they're the cheapest little gears that you can put in one of these, I would imagine. They do turn freely of a sort. They're just not, they're, they, they do bind. And I don't know why, but there is a little, there is a little resistance there every so often. And that resistance, this is the drive gear, that resistance is what broke this one. So this one, when this one turns, which is connected to the motor, it turns all the rest of them. And it, uh, you can see how that works there. So this turns and they, they're, all, they're all turned. So what I'm gonna have to do 
is, well, I'm not going to be able to get that out with one hand, I'm sure. Uh, there's just no tolerance there. You can see, like right now, it's jammed. There's just no tolerance whatsoever. That's whatsoever. Oh, come on. So that's probably what uh, stripped this one out. Is because it's just it's just Mickey Mouse the whole setup. Well, the design isn't isn't Mickey Mouse. The design works okay. It's just the parts that they've used on this are. I don't see how you could get any cheaper. Uh, any any cheaper parts to fit together any worse than what these do and still function even one time you see like right there now that's a, now that is effectively locked and there's no reason for it to be I can I can turn it one way but I can't turn it and now I can turn it the other so sometimes it'll turn and sometimes it won't and that's what stripped this gear out See, it goes around to a certain point here and then locks. And I don't know if that's because this one of these gears is out of round. Uh, I don't know what the problem is. I'm going to put all the tubes back in it and see if it'll turn a little more freely with the tubes in it. See if that's the problem, if it just doesn't like to turn without the tubes in it. Uh, and I'll continue on with this. Alright, well you can obviously, I know, since I know how they're fitted together now, I didn't take all the tubes out, I just took this end plate off. And you can quite obviously see what the problem is on this one. I'll hit the turn button. And you can see the motors are fine. It's just once again, we've stripped out a gear. So, I'm going to fish this out of there. these I don't know why they were I don't know to me it's almost like it was designed to fail I'm gonna see where's my screwdriver well, I'm gonna have to shut this off and use two hands I think yeah maybe not oh yeah that's bound in there good All right, this one is still on its cup, it's still on the, there's a, this part goes over the gear, goes over the motor like this, and that holds it like this, and I guess I didn't show you, and that holds the gear on, and that part is still on the shaft of this motor, and I don't want to totally destroy it. So I'm going to have to remove the motor. I'll try it one more time with the screwdriver. You know, I don't know why this is so hard. First of all, it should be all metal gears. Because if I can turn this by hand, but it's not easy to turn. It takes a lot of torque. And I don't know, it just should be smoother. But it's not. And I think that's what's causing the failures. One of these gears I noticed is already missing a tooth. Which one is it? Well, I can't see it right now. Maybe it was just dust or something. Anyway, uh, Tatai came up and he he's already gone with the first gear to try to see if he can find another one. I'm sure that that stuff that Bill sent us doesn't have this gear set up. For one reason, these motors are not interchangeable. These are the motors that Bill sent with the parts to make a new one. You can see the shaft sizes are different. This being the one that he sent. This one being the original. Uh, the shaft sizes are different the actual size of the motor is different and the original motor is much thicker and beefier than uh, the replacement ones uh, I haven't even wired one of these replacement, replacement ones up to see if it has something similar 
uh, to the same gearing. If it does, uh, we may have to end up using them because I don't know how uh, effective we're going to be in, in replacing these gears. I'm, sh I'm quite sure that there's not any laying around anywhere in the Philippines. So I'd have to get on Lazada probably or Shopee or, or maybe even Ali, AliExpress and try to find some of these drive gears uh, and that would be a long wait be coming from China. Uh, again this one here works but it's not smooth. Right there it was even kind of bound a little bit and that's what and now it's bound again. Because there's just not the, the, there's no there's no fine tolerance anywhere in this. It's all just kind of loosey goosey. And that's why these drive gears keep stripping out. So I don't know if we're going to be able to glue this back together or epoxy it together. What we're going to be able to do, but we'll 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 figure it out one way or another. Again, same thing. The motor is working. The gear is stripped out and broken. So all three of these were broken that way. Top ties back. Um, broken as well. Yep. And all right. There are no more of these gears anywhere. Thought I couldn't find any down there. What we did is we. Uh, Every other, every other one of these gears is like this. It has a, a little guide on it, or, or a little nipple on it, that the uh, roller attaches to. And the roller attaches here. That's what uh, the, little square, the little square end is there. That attaches to the gear and it turns. So. Since we have no more gears, and these gears are all the same size, um, we just took one of those gears and reversed it. And we just took one of these gears, it fits after a fashion on that motor. And it turns the gears. Again, it's a little uh, hoppity skippity. Uh, it does turn them though if I can get the camera out of the light. I guess I can't. But then we have the problem that uh, the only way that this gear will fit on to this motor because this this side of this gear is very small and it has to fit and I can get it off now. It has to fit on the on the drive pin. It has to fit on there, and it won't fit from this side. So, this is the only way that it will go. I'm going to line it up again. Try to. There we go. So, uh, because of that, it it now will not. Uh, this little plate, this little plastic plate has to fit on here to hold all the gears in place. It has to flip, fit down flush. So uh, we're going to have to cut this. Tata only wants to take off about this much of it to here. And then we're going to have to drill a hole in this to fit, because this has to fit down tight to hold all those little gears in. So it's going to end up being that there's probably going to be one, let's see, we've got three that we have to fix, so we're going to have to use three of these gears. So uh, we're going to lose uh, three rollers. But it's the only way that I can figure out how to make this work. That was actually Tata's idea to reverse one of these gears. That never would have occurred to me. Uh, good on Tata, it's good to have him around. He doesn't think that we'll be able to epoxy this 
I mean, I was thinking we could put enough epoxy on it that it would hold. He doesn't seem to think so. So, uh, we're just going to do it this way and hope for the best. Alright, well, I used the truck's trusty hacksaw on that and sawed off that little nipple on it. I'm going to reassemble this. <laughs> I don't tip it over first. I'm going to reassemble this, put all the roller tubes back in it, and see if it's going to work. Alright, well, we had it all back together and hooked it up and turned it on. And again, the gears are so sloppy in there it'll make a little bit of a turn and then it'll bind and uh, there was snapping and pinging going on so I took that cover plate back off expecting to find another shattered gear or two but somehow it it, uh, it didn't break any of the gears but I, I have come up with a secondary plan here um, this motor is just not, as you can see, it moves a little bit. You can see me moving it there. Because this is just not that rigid. And I think it, it, it moved enough to where it slipped that gear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wedge this in with something. I'm going to wedge it down into the housing of the incubator and see if we can get it in there tight to keep these gears in place, keep them from... Uh, moving around in there and hopefully that will help I don't know I, I from the snapping and pinging we just heard I don't have high hopes that this fix is gonna work because it's just not uh, just not quality parts there's too much slop not not tight enough tolerances and all the all this should be all the gears should be metal anyway instead of this cheap plastic crap is that one stripped again and of course now we've got one of the screws that it started to strip out on me and I think it's finished up on top of it uh, stripped. So let's try to get this back into place here. Now let's take something Tata and put against this back. Um, styrofoam. We'll use styrofoam. If we if this will work we'll use styrofoam but for right now I'm just going to wedge my pliers back in there. We do have plenty of styrofoam laying around. Alright, I've got that hooked up, so let's give it a shot here. Well, they're turning. It's bound again, I can tell. Hit it again. Well, it seems to be working okay now. Maybe that was the secret, putting that styrofoam behind it. It's too thick. Again. 
I see it should be turning and it's bound, I can tell, because this one here is just trying to go back and forth. That one's turning. Well, I can feel them all turning. Still a little bit of loosey goosey slop in there, but for now we've got this one working. So on to the next one. All right, this is the second one. And it's working. Looks like it's working good to me, Tate. All right, one, one, uh, two down, one to go. All right, this is the final one. So we've lost one, two, three, four rollers because uh, we had to use those parts. So let's see if this one works. Yep, it's turning. You can see that movement right there. So, uh, I'm going to hook them all together and uh, hope for the best. Alright, well I've got it all assembled. Top one's working. The next one's working. They're all working. So, uh, it wasn't a motor problem, it was a gear problem. I'm going to disassemble it all again, put the eggs in it, and uh, man, that's still a little bit of rattling going on in there. Hopefully, it'll last through this hatch and it won't strip out another gear. Alright, well I've got the first tray set in. Only 26 in this bottom tray, because um, we had to use the gears to make the others work. I've only got 169 to set. There's a few out in the kitchen that I might use. I don't think, uh, I think 169 is going to pretty much fill up this incubator. So uh, I think I'll have enough. All right, well, I've got 196 eggs set. Um, I had a few extra that I used, and I probably could have set another full row, which was, or ten. I could have fit over 200, and even missing those uh, three tubes down on the bottom, because the native eggs take so much less space than the Kabir. So um, I can't get it. I can't get it set back to day one for some reason. Um, who knows? I just turned it on so it's cold and the humidity's high so uh, I said 196 eggs this is going to be the last trial for this incubator in this setup if I don't get at least 110 to hatch uh, 110 would be in the mid 50s and, uh, as a percentage rate I'd really uh, let's see, what would 80% of 196 be? Uh, about 160 or so. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd like to get 150 out of this. That would be what I would consider a successful hatch rate if I got 150. If I don't get at least 110, uh, I'm going to relegate this incubator into being a, a hatcher. I uh, just taking eggs out of another incubator and putting them in it for the last couple days for the chicks to hatch. So as it heats up, I would expect that humidity level to fall. I mean, I just put it on there. And hopefully it'll get down below 50% pretty quick like, or 60% uh, pretty quick like. 
I don't know if it'll actually get down to 50, I would like it to, but uh, anything around 60 or between 50 and 60 is fine. Wish me luck guys. Uh, I'm hoping to get 100 and 150 would be fantastic. Uh, I need to get over 110 or uh, this incubator is a memory. Thank you everyone. Please like, comment, share and subscribe.